Hello, and welcome to the P1 Paranormal Podcast. And this podcast is all about my knowledge about all things paranormal that happen in our world that most people believe to be fake or easily explained. Now, I've spent a vast majority of my adult life and my teenage years in reading up on anything and everything paranormal. I'm a huge, huge, huge fanatic when it comes to the paranormal. Now, when it comes to those people who are saying that this is fake and this is easily explained, I'm, I'm going to tell you, most of the time they're right, but in some cases they're wrong. And sometimes things just can't be explained and sometimes the things that go bump in the night are in fact ghost ghouls, goblins, and demons. Now, this very first episode, we will be covering ghosts. And before we get into it, anyone that has ever had any type of paranormal experience or has heard a story from a friend or a loved one, please email me that story at p1paranormalpodcast at gmail.com. Again, that's p1paranormalpodcast at gmail.com. I would love to hear your story and... If you want me to, I'll even talk about it on the podcast. You can also follow me on Twitter at P1Paranormal. On Twitter is where I update everything about my podcast. And I post a bunch of uh, paranormal pictures and stories that I've heard. And anything that I don't cover on the podcast, I'll be doing on Twitter. So make sure you follow me on there. And there will be some questions and everything that I would like you guys to answer to answer if you're not watching it on YouTube you can tweet it to me now let's go ahead and get straight into into business now many people believe that hauntings and paranormal events are the same thing when in all actuality they're really different so to start everything off we're going to go over what a ghost is. And according to Hans Holzer, which is a late professor of parapsychology, and parapsychology is the study of a mental phenomena which are excluded from or inexplicable by orthodox scientific psychology, such as hypnosis, telepathy, and etc. And this is a quote. Ghosts are similar to psychotic human beings incapable of reasoning for themselves end quote now most people believe that ghosts are here to cause us harm and that couldn't be further from the truth if you feel something brush up against your arm or hear a bump in the night or even if you're lucky you catch a quick glimpse out of the corner of your eye of a figure it's most likely a, a ghost trying to communicate with you if they're not strong enough, sometimes moving furniture or standing in a doorway or a hallway is the only way they have to communicate. Now, ghosts have several things that they are able to do. It does, however, depend on their strength, and their strength depends on their stage of the afterlife. Some ghosts can make make or speak, speak or make sounds, I'm sorry, change the temperature or even physically move things or touch people. Now, as to how ghosts behave will all depend on how they were when they were alive. So let's say that you were a real nice and kind person while you were alive and then you passed away. That's how you would be in the afterlife. Now, on the other side of that, if a person is mean and cruel, well, you'll, you'll want to get, get rid of that ghost as soon as, you, as soon as humanly possible. Now... When it comes to a, and I quote, haunting, ghosts are almost always tied to the place that they died. They're also tied to any events or people who were involved. If a spirit died tragically or abruptly, they can be in denial that they've died. Ghosts are believed to be caretakers of the afterlife, meaning that they stick around to make sure their families, friends, homes, and belongings are taken care of. But there is another side of the spectrum where the violent or sudden death caused to them may make them become very dark and sinister. Typically, this side of the spectrum has people that have died in an extremely violent or unexpected death. That type of ghost is almost always a problem. But question, did you know that there are seven different types of ghosts 
it took me a long time to find out that there actually is seven different types. And the first type that we're going to go over is usually what is in movies or in books. And a lot of people will classify them as more of a demon than a ghost. And it could go either way. And that is a poltergeist. Now, the name poltergeist, it means it's a noisy ghost. And that's because they make a ton of noise to try to scare people or to get their attention. Simply put, this type of ghost you do not want in your house. Uh, they love to make their presence known, yet do it in a very subtle manner. Sometimes they start by banging on walls, which will lead up to pinching, hitting, and tripping. And most of the time, poltergeists are written off as a natural phenomenon or a psychological issue. Whatever the case, poltergeists might start off as a harmless ghost, but they can become very problematic over time. So now the question is, what do you do if you have a poltergeist problem? First and foremost, and I cannot stress this enough, under absolutely no circumstances should you try to reach out or try to communicate with them. Never, ever try to catch them on video, and I cannot stress that enough. The best way to rid yourself of a poltergeist is to start by implementing pre preventative methods like cleansing and blessing your home. And if that fails, then you can reach out to a professional. Do not try to do it yourself. Reach out to a professional to get rid of the ghost completely. And fortunately for all of us, a poltergeist is a fairly rare type of ghost. So we're not going to come across them as often as what is portrayed in movies. They are, however, one of the most feared ghosts. But this could be due to most movies and books and TV shows being made about them. Like I said, they're the most commonly used ghost in any type of horror movie. Next up is an orb. Orbs are one of the most common types of ghosts around, and you can see them in pictures or video as white or blue balls of light that is relatively transparent. They're usually suspended or hovering over the ground, and you can see an orb with the naked eye on rare occasions. If you are able to see an orb with the naked eye, that means that the orb is making its own light source. When seen in a picture or video, these orbs are usually explained as a fleck of dust on the lens or a camera malfunction or a reflection of light. Orbs can move very quickly, making it almost impossible to be caught on video, which is why most orbs caught on video are completely by accident. From all the evidence that professional paranormal investigators have gathered, the best way to capture an orb is by using just a regular camera. Many investigators believe that orbs are the soul of a human or an animal that has died, and after their death they travel around or move from place to place. Orbs are also not associated with hauntings, contrary to most people's beliefs. They are unable to touch, speak, move things, change temperature, or reach out in any way. So if you see an orb, don't worry about it. They aren't the evil spirits that you should be worrying about. Up next is a type of ghost that is called a funnel ghost. These ghosts are associated with cold spots, so if you've ever walked into a house or an old building and you start to feel a chill, there's a chance that you encountered a funnel ghost. It can also happen just by walking and getting a random chill on a hot day. This type, same as the orb, is again no reason to worry. They also aren't considered to be evil spirits. What they are considered to be is loved ones or previous homeowners coming back to visit. They are very rarely found outside, but it can happen, and they can also take the shape of the swirling funnels of light, thus why they are called funnel, funnel ghosts. They are similar to orb ghosts, so a lot of experts believe that these types are just stages of the afterlife. The funnel ghosts are a little harder to spot, as a cold spot is the only true way to identify one unless you're lucky enough to spot the funnel. There are tools that you can use to find these ghosts as well, but you'll have to use what's called a thermal Im uh, imager, which you can find online. There really isn't a lot of information about these ghosts in general, though. Many investigators are working hard to find more information. Now, outside of the orb ghost and the funnel ghost, the next most commonly spotted ghost is what is called a interactive personality. Simply put, 
An interactive personality is a person who has passed away. Most of the time you'll know them, and they, are typic they typically come to comfort or warn a loved one. Interactive personalities can speak, make noises, touch you, and even show themselves completely, which makes most of the paranormal community believe they will look and speak exactly how you remember them. Poltergeists can touch you and make noise, but there isn't another type of ghost that can actually speak to you. Unless you count demonic possession, but we will talk about demonic possessions in a, in a later episode. Uh, many believe that this is the final stage in a ghost's development. Which makes sense if you think about it because they're the most similar to their human form in this stage. So do you believe that this is the final stage in the afterlife? Go ahead and email me or comment below if you're listening to this on YouTube and let me know. And you can also tweet at me and let me know what your thoughts are. Now, they do retain some personality they had when they were alive. And to really blow your mind, listeners, they even smell the same. Interactive personalities might be one of the most inspiring types of ghosts. They can be mean and grumpy just like any human can be. And they aren't that dangerous. That is, unless they don't like you. But rest easy. Even if you they don't like you, they can't haunt you, possess, or even truly hurt you. Now the fifth type is called ectoplasm or ecto ectomist. They are seen as thick substance such as slime. And these ghosts are seen when a medium, which is something else that we will cover in a later episode, is trying to manifest a ghost and then expels the substance from their body. Now... Now, some claim that the substance is a thick-like slime. Others will say it's like a bundle of thread. It is always described, however, as being white, black, or gray. Now, once this medium expels the ectoplasm from their body, the ghost will then place the substance over themselves to be seen by whomever it is that is summoning them. Now, this type of ghost can move extremely fast, but once they have the substance on them, they remain in one spot. Now it is also said that the ectoplasm can smell so badly that you can barely stand to sit in the room with it. Now the ectoplasm is one of the most controversial types of ghosts because they've been seen, photographed, and cannot be explained. Thus, why it's so controversial. And they can easily be faked. That's why they're so controversial. Now, the last type that we're going to cover is what is known as a shadow person or shadow people. I know in the beginning that there are that I said that there were seven types of ghosts, but the last one we're going to discuss is in the next episode. Now, when it comes to shadow people, they are the most seen yet most ignored type of ghost. A ghost person is a type of ghost that is described as a shadow in the shape of a figure, person, or a mass. And they are often shaped like a human, but don't have any human-like features such as a hair or nose. Most of the time when a person encounters a shadow person, they always claim that the ghost was staring at them or looking at them. And this is, can't be further from the truth, as shadow people do not have eyes. As I said before, they do not possess human-like features. Now, most will also say that shadow people are evil and menacing because they scare people most of the time. And there's no way of really knowing this, as when they are spotted, it's usually brushed off as, you know, a dream or something. So, more than likely, it could just be a wrong time, wrong place scenario. And the biggest argument in the world of the paranormal is that if the shadow people are evil, kind, or a neutral ghost... They can't touch you or cause you any physical harm. They don't appear to be able to move furniture, and they don't look like anyone we used to know. There really isn't any information outside of what I've provided because once you see them, you tend to shake them off as a trick in the light or something that you were dreaming, like I said before. Now, the last type of ghost that we're going to talk about is actually going to be in the next episode and that is a demon. 
like I said, we're going to cover this in the next episode because there's a lot to discuss when it comes to demons. There, I cannot stress this enough, though. Do not actively try to look for these ghosts or these demons unless you're a trained professional. And when it comes to demons, stay away from them. And with that... I would like to say thank you for tuning in. I know these are short episodes, but when we get further along and more people start coming in, I'll make them a little bit longer and I'll start bringing other people onto the show. So make sure you come back for the next episode. And in, in the last few seconds of this, I just want to ask you one question. Again, you can email me or tweet me or comment below with your answer. Which of the types of ghosts discussed today do you find most interesting? I'm really looking forward to your answers. Thank you, and until next time, keep an eye out, everybody.